Robertson County and we're in the town of Mount Olivet. We're at the Mount Olivet Senior Center and with me we have uh, the coordinator for the program and one of the members. Would you introduce yourselves? I sure will. I'm Ruth Ann Jed. Okay. This is Harry Hester. Harry Hester. Okay. We're trying to get some information on the county, but I also see that you have a pretty good senior center here. How long has it been in operation? 21 years. I've worked here 21 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, the courthouse itself, that's, is that the original courthouse? Do you know? It's the only one. It's the only one yeah. the county's had? Yeah, my grandfather, he was uh, mastered when they built it. And he was going to build it one story high, and all five matches ma were masons. So they said, let us go on up to the second floor for Masonic Hall. We had a Masonic Hall up there for years and years. And uh, finally, they just kept after them. They sold it out to the county, and now it's just up there empty and nothing going on in it. So the county didn't benefit by buying it, and, and we lost a big lodge hall up there. It, mm. And the county went, went ahead and put in an elevator there, and, and cost $50,000, and they had sitting all there and nobody using it. So it's just probably about $70,000 spent there for foolishness. Mm -hmm. In other words, they was going to move all the federal officers up there on that floor, and then when they got it, well, they, they didn't want to go up there. And I don't blame them for that. Mm -hmm. Do you, what's the population here? Do you have a, an idea what it might be in the county? 2,300. I, I believe I've seen that in the paper here not too long ago, 2,300 2, people. There's about 1,300 voters, and there's something over 1,000 voted in this wet and dry election in, in the 24th of March. That's pretty good. If someone came up to you and asked you what what you would want to see change or, or improve in Robertson County, what, you, what would you say? Well, I'd like to see a little factory come in here, but to, when they come in and look the place over, no, no railroad or anything like that, and, and they just seem like they back off on that account. We, we need a little factory here, maybe a hundred people or 150, but you can't get them interested in it. Maybe. Okay. Is there any special little stories you have about the county? Any, any, any special special little stories that you might have about the county? Well, <laughs> I was state highway foreman here during World War II. And I'm a Republican. And I'm sorry to say, I'm, I imagine he's a Democrat in it. He is, but that's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I don't. So when, when they set it up there, they wanted to put all Republicans on the highway, and I said, no, we're going to go half and half. And I'm the only man who's ever run the highway department ought to, like it ought to be run, because I, I looked at it this way. When Governor Willis was elected, I, I felt like that the Democrats had come over and, and done it, and so they, they were entitled to jobs as well as Republicans. So then... Uh, Later on, in 1955, I made the race for county judge here, and so the Republicans kind of got sore because I wouldn't put all Republicans on the highway, and uh, they beat me 147 votes. Now, this county is 600 Democratic majority, and they only beat me 147 votes, and I think that's pretty darn done good for a Republican to do this county. I'd say you did real well. Georgetown, county seat of Scott County. Scott County population, 21,931. Area square miles, 286. Rank, 71. Scott County is located in the 6th Congressional District. We're standing across the street from the Scott County Courthouse. County seat is Georgetown, Kentucky. 
To my right, we have Mrs. Bevins, who is a local historian who has graciously volunteered some time to answer some questions for us. What can you tell us about the formation of the county? Well, Scott County was established along with Shelby County by the first Kentucky legislature in 1792. Uh, we were settled uh, several years prior to that. Uh, Georgetown, which is really built around the biggest spring in Kentucky, was first settled as a community in 1786. Uh, there had been a fort uh, on the bluff over the spring in 1775 and 1776. It had been abandoned, however, and uh, the community wasn't permanently settled until 1786 when, when the Baptist preacher of great renown, Elijah Craig, came to Georgetown with a group of Baptists from Virginia. They named the little community Lebanon. Uh, in 1783, some other Virginians, led by Robert Johnson, settled at Great Crossing, and their settlement was actually the first permanent settlement in the county. But after 1785, when people began moving out of the forts, the area filled up very quickly. Um, Elijah Craig was, was quite an industrialist. Uh, not only was he successful as a Baptist preacher, he'd been in, in jail in Virginia for preaching uh, without a license. And when he came to Kentucky, he was quite anxious to establish a town where advantages of employment, uh, uh, early industry, uh, where children could be educated well, and where, of course, he could expound his Baptist doctrine. Um, He's given credit for building the first paper mill in the West. That opened in 1793. He um, is also credited with opening one of the first rope walks in Kentucky, one of the first fulling mills. He had a grist mill. Uh, he was, uh, he very heavily invested in the industry of the area and in the employment of the area. And uh, we're now uh, in the process of celebrating bicentennials of all those things that Elijah Craig did. We'll celebrate uh, this year, uh, this fall and next year, the bicentennial of education in Scott County. Uh, the next year we will celebrate the bicentennial of industry. Uh, then we will be uh, celebrating the bicentennial of the official incorporation of Georgetown, which is 1790. Uh, and uh, two years after that, we'll celebrate the bicentennial of Scott County. Quite a, quite a busy year. How did Scott County get its name? Well, Scott County was named after <clears throat> General Charles Scott. He was one of the two most popular military leaders in frontier Kentucky, uh, along with uh, General Isaac Shelby. Uh, both Scott and Shelby were governors. Uh, Scott, however, was uh, didn't have quite the reputation uh, of being as genteel as General Shelby was. He was really a very rough character, and there are a lot of good folklore stories about him. He lived in Woodford County. Scott County was created from Woodford County, uh, which had prior to that been a part of